Hi, Sai and Sai here from User Radar. Um, today we are joined by the brand new Korg. Multipoly. Multipoly. Yeah. Well, that looks a bit similar to a certain Monopoly from years gone by. Just to start off, let's just say that this has arrived with us very recently. It's just been announced today. So we're kind of going to go just a bit of a first impression today. You can find a full, more in-depth review at the link below this video. Yeah. So we're just going to talk about a few first impressions. Mm -hmm. What is it? I hear you ask. Mm. You didn't ask, but I think I... you would have asked. I was going to. Yeah. As you've said at the top of this, um, it kind of looks and makes obvious reference to uh, something called the Korg Monopoly. And so Korg Monopoly, um, you're, you've always had a soft spot for it, haven't I you? I have, yeah. Korg Monopoly Never was a, a Korg synth from the early 1980s, uh, which was a bit weird, and people love it because it's a bit weird. So what was a bit strange about the mon Monopoly, other than the fact it's based around an excellent pun, is the fact that uh, it was a four-oscillator synthesizer, which was quite rare at the time, but it would use these four oscillators in... Um, a variety of ways so that it could be, as the name suggests, both a mono synth and not technically a proper poly synth, but a paraphonic synth, which yeah. means you basically got these four oscillators and you could use those four oscillators to play different notes. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a few different ways you could do that. It had this cool uh, chord function so that you could tune each oscillator and play chords. Um, it also had a sequencer and like arpeggiator type thing that would let you effectively trigger different oscillators with each note. So it was kind of known for, I mean, over the years, these kind of really cool techno-friendly art line things yeah. where you kind of get different notes, different tunings with different waves, mm. all in these arpeggiated patterns. Yeah. Um, and so so that's kind of what it was. It was halfway between a monosynth and a polysynth. Yeah. polysynth. Um, and now we have multipoly, which is kind of like that, but not <laughs> yeah. at all. Yeah, similar idea. So let's start with a few basic things. Um, of how this fits into Korg's current range. Okay? Yeah. So obviously, um, anyone who has seen Korg's more recent kind of digital synths, so we're talking things like the Op6, yeah. uh, Wave State, yeah. Mod Wave, mm -hmm. and the more recent King Korg Neo, all of which are in this kind of form factor with like 37 keys, yeah. the, the a similar sort of kind of UI um, and design. And so this fits neatly into that range. Mm -hmm. So one thing, that uh that it shares with that range and it doesn't share with the original monopoly is the fact that um the monopoly was an analog synth and this isn't an analog synth no, it's modeling it uses analog modeling but actually Korg describes this as an analog modeling synth which actually i think isn't quite how i would describe it yeah yeah which it i don't mean a short bit i don't mean that um which will come come on to this in more yeah, depth but yeah. i don't mean that as a criticism yeah what i mean is when i think of an analog modeling synth i think of you know, one of those, uh, a virtual analog style synthesizer that's designed specifically to sound like an analog synth. And yeah. this can do that in that we've got, like other recent kind of Korg synths, you've got um, sort of analog style waveforms and you've got modeled filters and things. But that's only half the story of what's yeah. going on. It's a hybrid. It's kind of a hybrid, yeah. You've got, you've got a mixture of virtual analog and digital and a lot of things going yeah, on here. Yeah. We'll get, at that, get more into that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about what this shares with the Monopoly. So as I said, the Monopoly was kind of distinctive for the way it had these four oscillators and you could get those oscillators to interact in um, interesting ways. Yeah. This also has four oscillators, but much more than four oscillators, it has four oscillators within four different layers. Right. So it's a multi-timbal synth. Yeah. You've got, you can see up here, we've got layers A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. And not only have you got four different layers, but each of those four layers has four oscillators. Okay. So it's basically, you know, uh, a monopoly squared, effectively. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah. That's, that's kind of um, as far as the similarities with the monopoly go. Yeah. Really, other than the fact that it's got kind of this, yeah. this nice design. Yeah. And again, I don't mean this as a criticism. Actually, one thing I really like about Korg's uh, digital synths in recent years, things like the wave state, um, is that a lot of them build on these kind of classic technologies without it feeling like it's just... Trying to, you know, yeah. trying to emulate it or yeah. just trying to kind of, you know, package up virtual yeah. 
virtual versions of the sounds. And that's yeah. kind of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Again, with Korg, it's kind of taking inspiration from that multi-layered oscillator thing and yeah. updated it and done it in a way that's much more 21st century. Mm -hmm. So what? let's talk about what each layer involves then. So like I said, you've got four oscillators. You can see that each oscillator here, we've got different modes. We've got classic. Classic is where that analog modeling kind of side comes in. Um, you've got, you know, obvious classic analog waveforms. Yeah. Plus a few kind of, you know, uh, detuned saws and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which you wouldn't obviously get with a classic uh, old school analog synth. Mm -hmm. Then you've got this digital list here, which is, it suggests is like um, a mixture of kind of more complicated digital uh, wave shapes. And then we've got Wave Shaper here. And the Wave Shaper is kind of like, um, it's a bit, I guess, a bit Euraraki inspired, almost a bit that kind of West Coast synth thing where you're using wave shaping to kind of uh, kind of distort and morph yeah, yeah. the, the, the wave waves. Form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's this is why I'm hesitant to say it's kind of described as an analog modeling synth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. necessarily, because actually it does a lot more than that. Yeah. And I think the the sounds that you get from it go well beyond what you would call call virtual analog or yes, analog modeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few other distinctive things here. You'll notice this chaos physics thing here. Mm -hmm. um, so chaos physics, that was, um, we've seen this previously on the... Mod wave. Mod wave. Yeah. Yeah, and it's um, this cool, let's just get out into there, quite, quite fun um, kind of touch uh, sensitive pad here, kind of like the old chaos pads. But the interesting thing that you can do with these is that not only, so not only does it... Um, you can bounce it you morph yeah. it but yeah you can kind yeah. of bounce it and you this is where the physics comes in yeah you yeah. kind of send this virtual ball bouncing around a space which then creates modulation yeah that's cool cool little thing yeah um a lot of what else is going on here like i said that's already from the mob wave mm -hmm. a lot of what else we've got going on here is actually kind of lifted directly from some of those other korg synths yeah including these um these mod knobs here which are a really nice touch from the whole of this range, which these are basically macro knobs, mm -hmm. and particularly with the fact that you can um, create these complex layers, having these macros where you can kind of control multiple ele elements of the sound in one go are really, really handy. Yeah. So for each of these layers, you've mm -hmm. got four different um, envelopes, all with multiple stages. So you've got attack, decay, sustain, release, delay, and hold stages, mm -hmm. plus you know velocity control. Yeah. So lots of envelope shaping. You also got um, LFOs here, um, kind of multiple LFOs going on, um, with some interesting kind of uh, shaping over the the LFO waves. You've got multiple um, effect slots, so you've got effect slots for each layer plus these master kind of master reverb here, where you can send, which acts as a send. You kind of send each layer separately oh, a different nice. amount. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I touched on before, you've got like a lot of these other. Um, recent Korg since you've got multiple modelled um, filters here. So not only do you have the Monopoly, as you would expect from something named after Monopoly, but you've mm -hmm. also got the the MS20 model filters um, and then some more um, some familiar kind of ones. more yeah. familiar and different yeah. modes as well. Um, uh, two filters per per layer there. So so there's a lot going on. Mm. Um, but the most interesting thing, and I think the thing that it's kind of that is inherited from the original Monopoly is this um, layer rotate mode. I think yeah. this is the kind of like, for me, the, the headline feature. That's the big USP, here. yeah. So let's, um, let's kind of just demonstrate that. And I'm just gonna go back to this patch um, here just to show you what's going on. Um, so you got, as I said, you got these four layers here. I'm gonna put this onto um, an arpeggiator and then we'll use the hold just so I can show you this um, and get an idea of what's going on. So, and let's just go. So, hold a simple chord there. Yeah. Obviously, arpeggiation, this is just coming from that uh, one first one layer yeah. here. But what we can do with this um, layer rotate and these other layers is, like I said, with the original Monopoly, where you could use um, different, different oscillators for kind of each note in, uh, in an arp line. Mm. Well, you can do that here, but instead with different oscillators, you can use completely distinct oh, layers. layers yeah. So let's now um, engage layer B here, and I will turn on this layer rotate mode. So you can hear, okay. we're now going between these two different layers. Yeah. We haven't 
kind of That's done their thing to. Patch, essentially, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, this is so. This is really basic. So what? Let's just um, make this second. Uh, uh, do something more interesting with the wave here. Maybe filter it a little bit. Okay, so got a little something going on there, and then let's engage layer C here and similar. Let's go into this wave shaping. Maybe put a different filter model on. Let's press hold. Uh, and then, like I said, so we've got three layers going on there. Let's try. turned on I can send different layers to that by different amounts Messing yeah, around for a few minutes, that's good you fun. get the idea of that what is going fun. on, and yeah. it's worth saying with that again. Other than this, the, that kind of A layer here, where you've got a few things in all these layers, I was quickly just knocking something up. I was only using one oscillator on those. Mm. You've got four oscillators at play on all of those layers. Yeah, um, right. You've also, as I said, the original Monopoly had a chord mode. You've got mm. a chord mode on here. Mm -hmm. um, some other things worth talking about that we're not going to go into properly here, but you've got a um, a, seek, a step sequencer with the Motion sequencing, which is you know the automation, yeah. um, We've developed available on a lot of these things. Um, range, yes. Yeah, and then um, and then you've kind of got uh, this set list thing as well, and this this is a quick and easy way to kind of pull up different sounds okay. um, and kind of your favourite patches and things like mm -hmm. that. So there's a lot going on. Okay, so Sai, you've had a bit more time on this than I have, yeah. um, and you've formed sort of early opinions. Yeah, so like I said, we'll call these first impressions. You yeah. can read my full review in a link below this video, yeah, yeah. which will go into this in more depth, but these are kind of, so first impressions on this, the, a few things we like and don't like. So what I really like about this, like I said, that layer rotate mode is endless fun. And just yeah. as soon as you start playing with that and playing with arpeggiations, like it's for kind of, whether you're doing sort of ambient -y stuff or um, doing kind of those sort of meaty techno patterns and things. It's really fun. Yeah. It also says, it's also worth saying that that layer rotate, although I was using an arpeggiation there to show you it really quickly using the hold um, mode, mm. and that plays really nicely with the sequencer sequence as well. well and you yeah. can kind of sequence different notes and kind of get completely different sounds kind of with each note. And there's, there's loads of fun to be had with that. And actually mm -hmm. the, the chaos physics, which, I'm still like uh, when we reviewed the mob wave, I kind of said that it was fun and I don't know how much I'd use it. Um, I still kind of feel like that about that, but this it's really fun once you mix it in with those different yeah. layers and things. And there it, they go well uh, together, those sort of two ideas. As soon as I started yeah, playing those together, it's um, yeah. it is a lot of fun doing that, and there's some really cool sounds. It's worth saying as well when I, when I kind of mentions those sort of more techno y lines and patterns, although. I said I, it's kind of not necessarily accurate to call this just uh, analog modeling synth. Mm. You can do those nice analog sounds, mm -hmm. um, particularly with the four oscillators and classic waveforms, detune them a bit and things, get the model filters. It does a nice um, a nice job of sort of meaty virtual analog. It also does, uh, if anything, its best sounds, I think, are the sort of digi the digital ones, the, right. 
the layered textures, the yeah. kind of rich um, wave shapey things. Mm. Um, so you've got quite a versatile sonic range yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, um, And there's, yeah, and there's a lot to like about the sounds you can create. Mm -hmm. So things we don't like so much, and it's not really not liking, but as much as I'm talking about the kind of versatility of this, I feel that way about quite a lot of these recent Korg synths, like particularly sort of Wave State, Op6, Mod Wave. What I do kind of think about this is that actually, although you can layer up these different timbres, once you get rid of that kind of layer rotate stuff. Um, in terms of the pure sound energy, I don't know how much this really does that we can't get out of something like Mod Wave or Op6 already. Okay. Like, whereas, um, so for me, Wave State's got really distinct sonic personality, mm -hmm. um, obviously in the way it kind of like sequences those, uh, those kind of sampled sounds. And Op6 is kind of very sonically um, characterful because it's got those, that kind of, very interesting take on FM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with this, I think once you strip away the layer rotate things, I don't know how much character it has compared to its kind of siblings on its own. I get you, I get you. But that being said, it's incredibly versatile and it sounds great. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, if you don't own a mod wave, you don't own things like that, there's tons yeah. of great sounds you can get out of yeah. this. I just don't know whether it's quite the the characterful synth in the way some right. of those other ones are. Very much hinged on its layer functionality. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, there's also worth saying that I'm sure there will be people out there who have been waiting years for Korg to bring back a Monopoly and will be disappointed that it's not a big, genuine analog synth. And this... I was a bit, I must, I can't lie, when I, when we took it out of the box, because we'd heard, you know, it was going to be multi-poly, we I got very excited. And I pulled out of the box, actually, grab the bag quick. It's one thing we it, do yeah, like about it. It does come with a nice it. bag. We do very like nice about bag. the fact that very nice bag. Here's the yep. bag. But obviously it says analog modeling. And I saw that and my heart sort of well, I just sank a little bit. But having heard you, you know, um, go through that like layer function, I'm slightly buoyed by it. Yeah, and I don't think do. I don't think the the non lack of analog is a detriment to it. Right. But yeah. what I will say is that if you're expecting, if you've seen this announced getting out expecting great it's going to sound exactly like a monopoly it doesn't it doesn't sound or feel like a monopoly yeah, to me it just looks a bit like but it. but it is a very interesting new take on some yeah, of those ideas absolutely yeah brilliant well price we don't know we don't know at the moment and we're hoping it's not king korg neo money. yeah so we've reviewed a few of these haven't we then yeah. the king korg neo when we spoke about that a few months ago that we that was strangely priced higher than the rest of its siblings. Yeah. Um, and we, it was also our least favorite of them all. Mm -hmm. What, remind me what the, the mod wave when that came out was six, six, four, nine, 650 six pounds yeah. dollars region. Yeah, yeah. If this is priced around the same as that, which I'm kind of assuming it's gonna be, mm -hmm. I think it's good value. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's got 60 voices, 60 mm. voices, four layers. You can do a hell of a lot with it as a synth, even if you kind of don't, go for the more characterful chaos physics layers and things like yeah. that. Um, a ton of modulation options as well. Yeah, I mean, deep in that department. It's, it's, its biggest competitors are its own Korg siblings, which yeah. the thing is you can actually buy for quite cheap now because the price has come down a bit. Yeah. But all of that being said, I really enjoyed having a play with this and getting diving in a bit more. You can read some more in-depth thoughts at the link below this video. But, yeah. but um, initially, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And that's real wood, by the way. We like real wood. We do like real wood. Not the whole end, it's just the top, but still. Yeah. Very nice. Um, let's have some more demos. We've had some at the beginning, obviously, but we'll have some more to play out. Yeah. Um, and until then, we'll, we'll say goodbye. Uh, we'd like to know what you think about this in the comments below. Do duke it out down there. Um, obviously, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you soon for more gear stuff. See you later. Thanks.